Hello everyone, I am Lockhart QT and today unfortunately we've got some rather sad news to start March. I apologise that this has taken me a couple days to make and get out to you. Uh, I do usually, I'm on top of you know Mass Effect and Bioware news but unfortunately I've got to be honest I have been completely just not on the internet at all because I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth which is fantastic by the way. Uh, as well as I've had some stuff going on in my real life that I've been trying to you know figure out and do stuff with and today unfortunately we're going to be talking about the dreaded EA layoffs what it means for Dragon Age what it means for Bioware Mass Effect and all of their other studios uh, also as well as in this video this is going to be very unscripted I will be talking about a lot of the stuff I've got it sort of pulled up on my laptop whilst I'm reading it so uh, if you guys could drop a like share and subscribe that would be fantastic as I do you know cover all things gaming and it's just a really sad one today unfortunately so let's get right into it so if you guys haven't uh, heard really, the news was broke by IGN, I think it was on, it would have been very very early in the morning on the 29th, it was something like 2 in the morning or something stupid in uh, UK time, but EA, also known as Electronic Arts obviously, announced that it is two undergoing mass layoffs, as, as you guys probably, if you are aware, most of the gaming studios across the entire industry have been doing mass layoffs just because of a few reasons and I'll get into that later and it plans to let go of 5% of its global staff meaning that roughly around 670 individuals have been fully let go from EA and that is across all studios so that's Star Wars, Battlefield, uh, Mass Effect, Dragon Age that is across all studios and this also comes on the back that last year Bioware had their massive layoff as well I think it was around uh, 50 or 60 employees and some of those employees were people that have been there since the original Dragon Age and the original Mass Effect so it was just really sad to see. So the reason that EA are making these layoffs are essentially they are going to double down on owned IP, their sports games, as well as their current single player IPs and massive online communities. Essentially what does that mean? Well EA actually had loads of games in the works that have now actually been cancelled outright. I'm not going to go through all of them, if you want to go see them I'll, I'll put the link to the articles from IGN in the description below as a source so you can read them there in full but uh, if you guys didn't know, Respawn Entertainment who are the guys who uh, basically they're the original COD for MW2 developers that branched off from Infinity Ward and Activision, they then made Respawn and then did the Titanfall games as well as the Star Wars Jedi games, they were working on a Star Wars first person shooter regarding a new Mandalorian character and it was going to tie into the Mandalorian TV show and the current stuff going on with Star Wars and apparently it was in a really good space and it was in really good shape and unfortunately this has been cancelled. This is really sad to hear from me because I'm a big lover of COD4 and MW2, uh, you know Vince Sampella and those people working on uh, Respawn I think are fantastic developers, I think pretty much every game they've made has been a banger, they also made obviously Apex Legends as well and it's just really sad to see that we're never going to see a first person shooter for in the Mandalorian really, it's just really sad. But you're probably asking yourself, well, what's going on with EA's other big licensed IPs? So essentially what's happening in, in the future, EA are really, they're not going to do licensed games anymore because obviously what happened with Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefront 2, it caused massive controversy. And ever since then, Disney and Star Wars have sort of, you know, uh, try to distance, them, distance themselves as well as LucasArts and Lucasfilms uh, from EA themselves and pretty much the games that I'm about to list are probably going to be the last Disney EA games for a while at least from my understanding of reading these articles as well as looking at a few interviews so let's go through them now. So EA have also confirmed that work on the third Jedi game, so obviously you had Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, and then whatever the third game is going to be with Cal Kestis is still in development from Respawn, which is fantastic to hear, but it does sound like that will be the last one. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of fine with it being the last one, but at the same time it's still sad. And then EA also have in development an Iron Man game and a Black Panther game. Both will continue in development and actually release as of writing this video. Again, plans on that could change as we're already seeing. 
Now, a lot of you are subscribed to my channel specifically for Bio Bioware games, and that's completely fine. By the way, if I I'm, I'm apologise if I'm stumbling some of my words, it's a very difficult topic to talk about. But uh, this is the actual statement from IGN, so let's go ahead and read and react to this. So, IGN understands that EA intends to reorient its business and development plans to focus on a handful of its biggest franchises, including EA Sports, Apex Legends, Star Wars Jedi, Iron Man, Black Panther, Battlefield, Need for Speed, Dragon Age, Skate, and The Sims. Now, if you're reading that, red flags and alarm bells are probably already going off purely for the fact that Mass Effect isn't mentioned in that list. However, IGN also learned that a team is still working on the pre-production on the next Mass Effect, though Bioware's current focus remains on Dragon Age. Now, I'll get onto Mass Effect and Dragon Age in a second, but the question that you probably also have is, why are these layoffs happening? So, we've already seen loads of layoffs. I think this is like a record number of layoffs across the gaming industry the past 12 months. We've seen Activision Blizzard, Microsoft, PlayStation Studios, EA, Ubisoft, and loads of other smaller indie, you know, indie devs and companies affected. Those are only a few, and those are some of the biggest ones. We've also seen like Bethesda and what not and it's just really sad to see loads of people on a personal note i've i have talked about this on stream but i've never talked about this in a video before on the 23rd of december which was two days before christmas by the way uh, i was actually sort of laid off from my previous employment and i completely sympathize with these developers and these people and what they're going through personally as i went through it as well the only thing that i can say is for a lot of people is to obviously just keep your chin up and keep looking for jobs if you could uh, people that are watching this video it would be fantastic that if you see a post from somebody who's been laid off from you know ea or playstation or somewhere maybe share their linkedin profile or indeed or whatever they've got posted on for example some people post it on their pinned tweet and they'll have like their job info on there. Uh, if you could spread that around with other developers, that would be fantastic. I know recently as well, it's not just, you know, unsuccessful projects that are getting canned, but successful ones as well, as recently Insomniac had layoffs as well, and obviously that's just coming off the back of the really successful Spider-Man games, Ratchet and Clank game, and obviously Spider-Man 2, which did really well both critically and commercially. So it just seems at the minute a lot of developers, it must be a really scary time to be a game developer, purely for the fact that, well, it's just, it's just really awkward because you make a bad game, you get laid off. You make a good game, you get laid off. It's just... That it doesn't really seem to be a clear-cut reason why. The only reasons that I can see why these companies are making mass layoffs is purely for the fact that we are now out of the global pandemic. Obviously, with COVID, it severely affected the world and people had to work from home and companies had to mass hire just to keep up with demand because of how difficult it was. And I know a lot of companies are getting rid of people now because they're finding it too expensive to keep them on. Um as well as the fact that a lot of companies are having to let go of people and make mass layoffs because of corporate mergers. Obviously, the biggest one probably to speak of was Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard and that finally going through last year. Um, as soon as that went through, I think it was like a, a week after or something like that or two weeks after, Microsoft decided to make loads of layoffs to the point where uh, studios like Toys for Bob uh, who make the the newer Crash Bandicoot and Spyro games got laid off into oblivion to the point where they're now considered an independent developer, which is bonkers to me. But a lot of you are subscribed to me for my Mass Effect content, so what does this mean for the next Mass Effect game? Well, as we saw in their statement, they're still working on the game, and the game is in pre-production, which is... The same thing they've been saying for the past four years. <laughs> oh dear. On a personal note, as a content creator, on someone who, you know, I, I got a, bit, a good chunk of subscribers from talking about Mass Effect speculation and theories, and most importantly, the news. I'd argue and say that making Mass Effect news videos is probably the most popular thing on my channel, purely for the fact that people want to know what's happening with the next game, and... I'm about to drop a bombshell on you guys, unfortunately. There is no news. This is the closest thing we've got to news, and it's not even really... 
inherently talking about the next Mass Effect game. A lot of people are probably going to spin this and talk about other things, but there is genuinely no news here at all for the next Mass Effect game, which is really unfortunate. So a while ago we talked about on the channel a rumour, it wasn't really a leak because, you know, you know, whatever, but it was a industry insider talking on the Xbox podcast, which is obviously Jeff Grubb, we've talked about him loads on the channel. If you want to go watch that video where I talked about it specifically, it'll be a link on the screen now as well as in the card and in the description and whatnot. And Jeff Grubb basically stated that he's he's actually got inside sources, pretty much uh, all the major gaming companies. He's got inside sources at Bioware as well. He's pretty much already proven that. He's got a decent-ish track record. And he talked about the fact that the next Mass Effect game was nowhere near done. Here's the clip now. It's just nowhere near coming out. This is not, this is, um... No, oh, no chart. I was told, like, so when they announced, uh, or when they, like, revealed Dragon Age Dreadwolf in 2018, uh, this is similar in terms of timeline, where that, that was announced in 2018, and we're not getting that game to maybe next year. So now do the math for that, and we're talking 2029 for Mass Effect 5. Dog, this this game is... I've heard some things as well, and this game is uh, so far away. It right? is so it far is away. In another galaxy right now. Uh-huh. Fucking hell. Uh, well. yeah, it's... So, hey, Tam, why'd they do this? Uh, maybe you'll find out and you'll hear a discussion about this on the latest episode of Spot On. GameSpot's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, definitely fun. will have a conversation about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, when, we, if, like, when I asked, it was just like, hey, is this just because they felt they had to do something for N7 Day? Yes. For this yeah. for this thing, that's exactly, that's all this is. Um, it, you got to imagine like they would be having... Uh, like well, they, they have to talk about like, hey, is this a good idea? Who knows if they thought it was a good idea or not? But um, it's proof of life. It's it's just proof of life. I, suppo and, like, I suppose the yeah, I suppose like, it's yeah. I think fans would probably rather have it. So as you can see from that clip, he talks about the fact that the next Mass Effect game is nowhere near done, and he's saying that it's probably going to come out 2029. If that is the case, that's really funny because that would mean that Mass Effect for the first time ever would have skipped an entire console generation, which which is bonkers to think about because the next PlayStation and Xbox are slated for 2028, meaning that the next Mass Effect game would be a PlayStation 6 and Xbox, I don't know, Series X2, or I don't know what it would be called, but um, yeah, it'd be a PlayStation 6 game, which is bonkers to think about. And I, I think I'm going to do a video sort of talking on this topic in more, but I think for this channel, I think we're going to have to slow down on Mass Effect content purely for the fact that there isn't really any talk content to talk about anymore. I've pretty much gone into what I'd consider all the theories and ma you know massive speculation as much as I can. There's only so many times that I can make a Is Commander Shepard returning video and it get like 2,000 views. <laughs> There's only so many times I can do that. And I've got to be honest, for Dragon Age Dreadwolf, I'm not really bothered at all. I'm not saying that Dragon Age is a bad franchise. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm just saying that I personally am just not that invested. I just don't really care if I'm being perfectly honest. I, the only reason I was going to actually do content on Dragon Age is because obviously that would tie directly into the next Mass Effect game because you get to see a lot of things in the same engine, in the same, you know, lighting and more the technical side of things really. But I'm not going to lie to you, times are really scary and... Like I said earlier, my heart goes out to all those affected, pretty much at all the major gaming companies, but for this video specifically, EA and Bioware, as well as you know, Respawn Entertainment and all their other studios, uh, from what I've gathered from the layoffs, they've apparently laid off loads of their like mobile game companies, and apparently they're actually sunsetting loads of the mobile games. And it just seems like EA are now currently quote unquote trimming the fat. I mean, from a business perspective, this does actually make sense. They're limiting back on licensed games that they don't really want to make or can't make with Disney because obviously Disney have lost faith in EA now after Star Wars Battlefront 2. And then obviously they're carrying on with their live service games, Apex Legends and EA Sports. But the biggest thing here for EA is to remember that single player games matter. I think it was back in 2016 or 2017, EA made that really horrendous that went, uh, comment that went viral, basically stating that single player games were dead and they don't sell well. And then only for that same year, for Persona 5, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and then the year after, Spider-Man, God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, 
Last of Us 2, all doing well, both critically and sales-wise. They all absolutely broke the bank for their respective companies. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is another one, and quite a lot of other games as well. There was single player that came out and just did really well. Mario Odyssey, again, the list goes on and on. I could sit here for probably hours listing the amount of single player games that have come out. Elden Ring, there's another one that have got, that's come out since they've just done really well. But um, yeah, I think EA have really got to remember now that single player games matter and it's not just all about live services because we've seen live services come out recently and they've crashed and burnt so i think it's now up to ea to sort of double down on single player and hopefully bioware can get dragon age dreadwolf and the next mass effect game out both on time as well as to the standard they both need to be because i know a lot of people don't like to talk about this in the Mass Effect community and I'm scared to, but I'm going to say it. These two games are EA and Bioware's last chance. For me as a fan, as well as for many hundreds and thousands of other people, these two games are the last draw. I, if Dragon Age comes out and it's really bad, like we're talking, you know, below a 5, below a 6, if it's really bad, Mass Effect's in trouble. Bioware as a studio is in trouble. If Dragon Age comes out and it's just horrendous, like we're talking Cyberpunk 2077 launch standard, where it just comes out and it's completely broken to the point where it's being pulled off the store, that's Bioware as a studio done. I know a lot of people go, no, that's not, that's not right. No, seriously, that is, that's probably what's going to happen. Andromeda, um, although critically had a very mixed reception, sales wise, I think it did okay. Uh, but Anthem obviously crashed and burned, which is really unfortunate because I think Anthem is probably the most potential a Bioware IP has had in recent, you know, recent memory. I think Anthem, if it was done well, could have been the next, you know, MMO for a uh, third person shooter. I think it would have done the Destiny killer, so to speak. But unfortunately, that just wasn't the case for hundreds of factors that I talked about in this video that's on screen right now. So there you go. But yeah, like I said, I'm probably going to do a video explaining more about my decisions regarding Mass Effect content on this channel. But if it, you know, if it's okay with you guys as fans, I am going to sort of slow down on Mass Effect content now, just because there's nothing really to talk about. Uh, I have tried making lore videos and other things, you know, talking about obscure Mass Effect stuff, but unfortunately those don't really seem to do well. And I've got to be honest, there's only so many times that I can do a theory speculation mass effect video that doesn't lead anywhere again for me personally it's not something that i want to continue doing without substantial information to bring to you guys and one thing that i've really learned on this little journey that i've gone on youtube is i really just don't want to you know spread misinformation and i don't want to lie to people and create clickbait videos and whatnot which i know i've done a couple times in the past and i've learned from it and I just don't want to be in the shape, you know, where I'm once a month making a Ish Commander Shepard returning video. Like, I just, I can't do it anymore. But, obviously, I'm not quitting YouTube. I'm not anything like that. But I think Mass Effect content is going to rapidly slow down. But, unfortunately, that's the end of the video. And, it, again, I do apologise if it, I don't seem like my bubbly self today. It's just a very hard topic to talk about. And it's one that hits very personal with me because like I said on December I was laid off myself luckily I found employment you know within a month pretty quickly but I know for a lot of people that's not the case like I said if people could share you know people's portfolios and CVs around that are working for EA maybe they can get a job elsewhere that would be fantastic if they could and my heart goes out to those people and I hope they're okay anyway guys for I guess more gaming content and uh you know stuff going forward don't forget to like share and subscribe and like i said if you want to watch any of my mass effect and dragon age videos where i've covered the layoffs that have happened previously at bioware and ea uh, those will be in a playlist on the screen now which is like a mass playlist of all my mass effect and dragon age videos so go ahead and watch that but thank you so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you all in the next video bye